abide in you, then you will abide in us, O oh God. And this morning we choose to be found in you. We choose to abide in you, O oh God. We choose to be hidden in you, Jehovah God.
Thank you, Reverend Witty. Good morning, church. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I believe the Lord has something for us. Amen. So before we sit down, as is our custom, as is our custom, you know our custom. So this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. Word of I, am I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And this very morning, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive, ready to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living word of God. And I shall never be the same again. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that with me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Praise the name of the Lord. I'll be sharing with us uh, from, we'll read a few verses today. Uh, we'll be reading more as we continue. But our main book is from the passages from the book of Philippians, chapter 4. We'll be reading verse 6 and 7. Then we'll be reading First Peter, chapter 5, verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Then we'll be reading First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. If you're there, say amen. Believe you're there. I'll read. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. First Peter 5, 7. First Peter 5, 7. It says, cast all, my version says all, not some. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Not part of your anxiety, not part of your cares. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. For you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. The topic of the subject of my passages today is dealing with anxiety. Tell your neighbor dealing with anxiety. Dealing with anxiety. You know, to be anxious is to be human. Because it doesn't matter who you are. A time will come where you'll experience some anxiety. Whether it's waiting for election results like we had that period about two months ago where you're not so sure whether it's part A or part B that will emerge victorious. Whether it's for us who are football lovers and it's, you've gone to penalties and it's sudden death. And you're anxious, you don't know whether it, your team will win or not. Whether you're here expecting a baby and you're at a delivery room. There is some anxiety. Because these terms, because of the uncertainty. And the very fact that we are limited. That we don't know everything. We can't see everything. And most critical is we are not in control of everything because we are finite. Praise the name of the living God. And so it doesn't matter who you are, your age, 
whether you're ed educated, your level of education, whether you're in business, whether you're employed, whether you're in ministry, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you have children or not, you will experience moments of anxiety. The levels of anxiety may be different. For some, we've gone through moments where you know what it is to see 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. falling up to 4 a.m. and you have no sleep. For some of us, you have so much trouble in your stomach. It may be running faster than you. For some, it's your emotional well-being. It's even affecting your spiritual well-being. And you see, church, anxiety is such a powerful thing that it even affects our physical well-being. Because reality is whatever is happening in our head will affect what's going on in your body. Because we need then to be careful how we handle anxiety. Praise the name of the living God. Because it's sad that at times the, we, that the worry, the worry is more dangerous than what you're worried about. Because you may be worrying about what you can fix. But while you are worrying about it, it's doing all kinds of damage. Creating ulcers, creating hypertension, creating depression and the like. At times you ask yourself questions. What am I going to do? Because there's a crisis in your finances. There's a crisis happening at your workplace. You have just received a bad report from a doctor. You have received a report from your school that you nambia ebuku je twende tuongea kwa ofisi. Maybe you have a friendship or a marriage that you see that is possibly crumbling before you and there's pressure. You're trying to imagine the solution, wondering if there'll ever be a solution. And before you know it, panic sets in. You're in total torment dealing with anxiety and worry and restlessness all multiplied. Praise the name of the living God. And you see the enemy... Our adversary, the devil, has a three-pronged agenda for our lives. His word says in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes to what? He comes to steal. Number two, what does he come to do? Number three, what does he come to do? That's his agenda for our lives. As in every day. Every moment and I imagine. How will I steal? How will I kill? How will I destroy? So everything he can't kill, he wants to steal. And maybe I may be asking us this very morning, that could it be that the enemy is stealing your today with the anxiety about tomorrow? Could he be threatening you about death tomorrow so much that you don't enjoy your life today? The strategy of the enemy is if he can't take the thing that the Lord gave to us, if he can't take that job that the Lord gave you, if he can't take that family that the Lord gave you, he'll attempt to make sure that you don't enjoy them. To have a home but not enjoy it. How many know that there are people if you can say five time at five o'clock when they're home and imagine nyumba and ashanka wa? You don't want to go to that home to have plenty of food, but kuna vile tu ina test too flat. How many know what I'm talking about? That you have a six by six king size bed, but to sing easy kuji. To have a job. 
but detest every morning as in leo ni sunday una imagine unaenda job kesho unachoka the strategy of the enemy is i can't take that job from you i can't take that family from you but i will try and make that thing as heavy nasty to you as possible so that it doesn't be of benefit to you and so his strategy is to attack our minds to throw imaginations in our minds to throw ideas in our minds because the battle is always in our minds tell your neighbor the battle is in your mind the battle is in your mind because it is in your mind that the battle between anxiety and peace take place wherever you allow to captivate your mind will rule your life i'll repeat that whatever you allow to captivate your mind will rule your life and so what the enemy is after as far as my life is concerned he's after my mind he wants to control my mind with negative thinking because as long as i can keep on sending negative thoughts as long as you can keep on sending never think negative thoughts in our minds we'll start losing hope we'll start despairing we'll start giving up praise the name of the lord and that's why the bible encourages us in second corinthians 10:5 that we take captive of every thought we can't give room for the devil to bring all the trash that he wants to to bring in our minds and maybe for now allow me to say that this message I may be sharing may not be for everyone because if you're not going through such anxious moments i'll encourage you to take notes because you'll need them for the storm that will come oh sorry i didn't say the storm that might come i said the storm that will come because all of us will battle anxiety nobody nobody in this place it doesn't matter whether you corner six pack or one pack i know that those who got that one she will go through anxious moments whether it's in the old testament or the new testament the bible does not like references of moments where people had anxious moments The psalmist experienced moments of anxiety. Psalm 94 verse 19. The Bible says, "When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy." The prophets experienced anxiety. We'll be looking at prophet Elijah at some point within our text today. The disciples experienced anxiety. In the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 to 27, the Bible records that Jesus had just finish feeding the people and he told the disciples let us get into our boat and to go to the other side and when they got in the they got in the to, into the boat and they started sailing the bible records that suddenly a furious storm came upon the lake so that the waves swept over the boat and allow me church to say that there are storms that will come into your life without a warning How many know what I'm talking about? That lowly I'm got too poor. Uli jo tuki like twin and a poor. Suddenly something hits you and you wonder, na isa say metokea wapi? Those no for warning. It may be a health condition. Maybe that you've lost an investment that you had really banked on. Something tragic, something serious that you never imagined. Pastor has just shared that he was with someone today and tomorrow this guy wasn't there to that family that's a storm it's a sudden storm sia tu mtu alikuwa mgonjwa mtoto alikuwa na kai kopoa suddenly the guy is not there it's a storm and these disciples got so anxious that they would drown and they went up and woke up jesus like where were really like una lala don't you care that we might drown here I want you to panic with us Jesus I'm kubaya I want you to panic with us nataka usikie pressure sisi tunasikia anxiety 
Philippians 2.28, Paul said he was eager to send Epaphroditus to the church in Philippi so that when they see him again, they may be glad and he may have less anxiety. Only Paul, my friend, Paul, William Tualiandika, two-thirds of the New Testament, Atayana ya nasema kuna mali alikuwa na anxiety. Jesus himself battled with anxiety. On the Garden of Gethsemane, before his crucifixion, he prayed for the cup of suffering to be taken away from him. In fact, he prayed with so much intensity and passion that the Bible records in the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 44. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground as in pressure. Pressure. But you see, church, but the beauty here is in as much as Jesus, who's our model, who's our savior, battled anxiety, he faced the fears, he fought through his fears and surrendered them to God and fulfilled his mission. And anxiety did not win. I said anxiety did not win. I did say that anxiety did not win. And you see, church, that's God's plan for you and me. That in as much as anxiety will come to you and me, it does not have to dominate our minds. You can have anxiety, but we, you and I, must purpose to ensure that anxiety will not have us. I'm sure we know the difference. You see, someone once said that you cannot stop a bird from flying above your head. But you can stop that bird from building a nest on your head. So the devil will not stop sending those thoughts, those anxious thoughts. But we have the opportunity, we have the responsibility to decide that utatuma nitarudisha, ukitoa ninatoa. You got it? We have the responsibility of ensuring that we do not allow anxiety to settle in our lives. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. The Lord wants to train us. He wants, the Lord wants to train our hearts. He wants us to train our hearts to be anxious for nothing. To be anxious for nothing means not letting yourself to be caught in a state of perpetual anxiety. I repeat this. To be anxious for nothing means not letting yourself, as in you are making a choice, that I will not, I, Dixon, will not be caught in a state of perpetual anxiety. Because it is impossible to live a life free of anxiety. But we can discover a life that is void from perpetual anxiety. That kila satu nikona pressure, kila satu nikona anxiety. Sijui ni nini tafanyika. You can be, you can live life be devoid of that. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. You see, church, anxiety, depression, stress, and happiness all come from a point of powerlessness. Because when you are powerless, you feel anxious. When you are powerless, you feel depressed. When you are powerless, you feel unhappy. Anxiety comes with life, but it doesn't have to dominate our lives. Praise the name of the living God. So the idea that you are powerless over some debt, over some sickness, over some situation in your business or in your workplace, in your school or in your family, that somehow you feel like it's about, to, it's about you to make things happen, that if you don't make them happen, then nothing will happen. That will bring you some level of sadness. it will bring you some level of anxiety. Because we only get anxiety over something 
that we are not certain about what the outcome will be. Praise the name of the Lord. You only get anxious when you are not sure what the result, what the outcome going to be. Praise the name of the Lord. Because why? Why would you be anxious about something you are so sure about? You already know the result. Why would you be anxious? You see, allow me to digress for a minute. Last week, my team, my team, my team was playing Man City. Before the match, I was very anxious. I remember talking to Caleb to get home. I'm like, Caleb, imambu noni itakuwa namna gani? Had, had some anxiety. Thank God for brothers, spiritual brothers like Caleb. <laughs> Caleb told me, Diki, relax. Coach wetu, amekuwa coach of the man. <laughs> Mambo itakuwa sawa. Voted coach of the man. Sikuwa shua nataka kuwatch your game. Anxiety likuwa. Wachani ni wambia siku watch. Si semi lolote. But you see, hizo results. Hatuangi ini church, hatuangi mamboza results. Ini church. But when I watch the highlights, I don't have anxiety. Because I already know the results. Sindio, sina pressure that easy balls neza pita sita. I already know the outcome. So I have no anxiety. I don't expect a surprise. I don't expect to talk a three to fike five. There are no surprises because I know the outcome. So you have no fear or anxiety when you know the outcome. And brothers and sisters, I have news today that we know the outcome. Because the outcome is as we sang today, that akonami, that law I will be with you always till the end of the age, that I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. I know the outcome that says greater is he that is in us, that he that is in the world. The outcome is if God be for us, oh, shakantai, who can be against us? The outcome is we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I know the outcome. I know the outcome that what can separate me from the love of Christ? What can separate me? I know the outcome. So when you know the outcome, anxiety has no choice but to leave you. That despite, in spite of everything, you know the outcome. And I want to share with us three weapons, I will say, that you can use against anxiety from the text that you've read in the book of Philippians chapter 4. And we want to say that anxiety wins when you shut up. Anxiety will win. Because all the three weapons that I'll be sharing require that you speak. So as long as you suffer in silence. The enemy will win. Number one, and this is from the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Prayer. Tell your neighbor prayer. prayer. Tell your neighbor prayer. prayer. When you're at a point where everything that could ever go wrong goes wrong, where you'll say like Job, that which I feared the most has come upon me. Open your mouth and pray. When the enemy comes in like a flood, open your mouth and pray. 
when you can't sleep at night mbona ni tu umeamko nafika asubuhi imefika unapata tu ni 217 Three high feet, you know, sanga two five it afika sangapi. Wake up, open your mouth and pray. Would you pray in your home? Would you pray in your fellowships? Would you pray in your workplace, in your business? Would you create altars to pray? When we keep on calling us here for prayer on Wednesday and man Sunday morning, ni kwa sababu tunajua dawa ya anxiety ni nini? Ni prayer. First the Lord says Solomon 5:17 the Bible says pray without ceasing pray at all times look at your neighbor and tell them you need to pray If you are worried you are restless you are stressed out you are anxious you are nervous unarusha matantrums azina mbele nyuma you need to pray Weapon number 1 prayer number 2 supplication because it say by prayer with supplication Supplication is in the prayer family but it is unique it's a unique kind of prayer because when you supplicate you lay prostrate is the act of lowering yourself is the act of prostrating yourself in the presence of the lord in other words it is the act of humility that this issue is too much for me i'm turning it over to you the lord you are admitting your limitations that i ah, yeah, when you supplicate you are admitting to the lord i'm not intelligent enough i'm not rich enough i'm not smart enough for this situation that i'm in ai hapana masomo yangu hizi nisaidia hapa i need you to show up on my behalf praise the name of the lord you come to a point where you bow before the lord you humble yourself you lower yourself you get rid of your pride that your masomo yako mingi na hiyo ma degree yako mingi na hiyo pesa yako mingi na hizo vitu unajifanya uko nazo you are saying ah they are all nothing before the lord for his word says in second chronicles 7:14 if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray supplication says the battle is not mine the battle belongs to the lord praise the name of the lord when we supplicate you'll be saying i don't have to think of nothing because the lord got a strategy i humble myself to the strategy and to the wisdom of god who works all things after the counsel of his own will and if he does not get me out of it then he's going to bless me through it hallelujah julius was saying referring to daniel uh, the three hebrew boys were kisema ah ah wacha nikwambie sikiza sikize ni vizuri afikiri likupita kidogo sisi sisi hatutabau get me clear get me clear sisi vile unatuona hivi sisi hatutabau because we are sure the lord is able to deliver us but in the event in the unlikely event he does not deliver us please get it again clearly we ain't gonna bow to your god hapo hapo hatuendi that i know he loves me that if he doesn't get me out of it then he gonna bless me through it if he allowed it to happen I know he loves me too much to hurt me. And if he allowed me to go through it, even if it's not something I would pick for myself, if he allowed me to suffer, I know he is here for me. Oh Shantai. If it got through his fence, if it climbed over his wall, I know he is going to use it in some way for my good. Oh Shantai. If I were to if it were to be my detriment he would not have allowed it. So even if he hurts my feelings and even if he breaks my heart and even if he redirects my thoughts and my life and then even if he reorders my steps like Job I'll say in Job 13:15 which when Julius raised it I knew the Lord wanted us to hear he said though he slay me oh shakaya yet yet shall i trust him i supplicate myself 
I supplicate myself. Weapon number three, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You know, anytime the enemy attacks you with anxiety, start counting your blessings. The Sunday school song is count your blessings, name them one by one. When he throws in anxiety, start counting the things that the Lord has done for you. Because when you remember that, you'll be able to say, if he did that for me, then he can do it for me again. Start recognizing and remembering that everything that the enemy is threatening you with is the Lord that already gave to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Start thanking God for it. You know, it may look small. It may look small. It may just look like five little fishes and the five loaves and two bread and two bread and five fish. All you know, the Lord is able to multiply. That it is able to feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. No, 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 5,000 men. Ladies, now watch to in your wingy. Now, bad will you tosha? That's small, but you're still able to thank the Lord for. Thank the Lord for the job that you don't like. Thank the Lord for the school that you may not like. Thank the Lord for the people who are looking at Sumbua Sumbua. Because while the enemy wants you to be miserable with these people, the fact is they can't stop you from being blessed. They can't stop you from being blessed. Because Bible in Asema, I can't curse who the Lord has blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. They can't stop you from being blessed. Uyo boss sumbua. Uyo employee sumbua. Uyo colleague sumbua. Uyo neighbor sumbua. They can't stop you from being blessed. Because when the Lord has declared, you are blessed, you are blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And so with prayer, add supplication. And to your supplication, add thanksgiving. And when you have those three in line, now you have a right attitude. You're not fearful. You're not distressed. You're not approaching the Lord with some panic, confusion. You're at a place where now you can, the Lord can tell you, now we can talk about this. Make your request be known to me. Line ikosawa, run ikosawa. Make your request be known unto me. You're not talking to the Lord from a point of anxiety. Make your request be known unto me. Na joko na pressure. But saizi pali umefika, unajua, ata kama ni cancer, unajua mine za deal na cancer. Unajua kukona diabetes. But pali tumefikishana na we, unajua ata yo diabetes, mine za deal nao. Niko na condition ya family ni drama. Mto ya nasumbua. But you know, that I am enough, that there is nothing that is impossible with me, that I'm a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what you can ask or imagine according to the power that's working with me. I am enough. I'm more than able. Praise the name of the Lord. When you get to that point, the Bible says, and the peace of God, oh Shahaya, and the peace of God, please, please note, not your peace, the big word here is the little word of. Kwachana jina peace. Of. The peace of God. This peace that originates from God. This peace that comes in from hanging around God. Hey! Yes, if we talk it you get it because you're hanging around God. Hmm. This is not in the natural order. This is not your natural personality that mukwatun may relax, mukwatun may tulia. This peace is the one that comes from God. Oh, makaya. This is not the way you'd have handled it, but the peace of God, of God, of God, peace that you can't get from your world, peace that you can't get from your wife. Peace that you can't get from your children. Peace that you can't get from your husband. Peace that you cannot get from your friends. Peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guide your mind and heart in Christ Jesus. And that peace, anxiety, how is it come, Karibu? How is it? How is it? Praise the name of the Lord. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I said in the Old Testament kuna mtu alisumbuliwa na anxiety anaitwa Elijah. In the book of First Kings chapter 18 from verse 16 to 40 you know the story Elijah engaged engaged with the prophets of Baal. Akakuwa na scenario na akamwambia by the way mchezo ndo mtaacha. Wacha to contest. Nyenye mnasema Baal ni God na mimi nasema najua God. So wacha tufanye hivi. Tufanye ni test to let a sacrifice hapa. E sacrifice. Ule God ata consume sacrifice. Huyo ndio tutajua ni God. Ah ni sawa hata akasema ni sawa. Contest ka happen. My friend waliambia kwani God wenyewe alilala? Kwani ali travel? Kwani ameshinda hii kazi ndogo? Fast forward the story. Elijah killed 450 prophets of Baal. That's in 1 Kings chapter 18. So chapter 19 from verse 1. Ahab akaenda kambia Jezebel, "We, ni kubaya." Jezebel, "Ni nini? Elijah my friend ametutibu. Ni nini?" Elijah has killed all the prophets. Ati umesema, Elijah, Elijah mgani ule sumbu? Yes, he has killed all your prophets. Jezebel akasema, prophets wangu, prophets wangu, verse 2. Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So the Lord let the gods do to me, and more also, if I not make thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In other words, 24 hours. Nita kuwa ni medil na wewe vilu lifanya watu wangu. Na kumbuka kaleka program tulikuwa tunawachi nitoa 24. Haishi, tunawachi siku mingi, tutunambia tini siku moja. 24 hours, my friend, by this time. Nita kuwa ni lidil. And maybe, uko hapa hii na hiyo sinari ya Jezebel, that umepewa 24 hours to live na daktari fulani. Umepewa 24 hours na landlord. Uhame nyumba. Umepewa 24 hours when the home kama una fees. Umepewa 24 hours utoke hiyo job. Umepewa 24 hours. Umabia my friend, utafikisha 40 years. Akoka condition. Ay, watu wapitangi 40 years. Pali tumefika. Miss Yoni, ako ka pregnancy. Ay, wale wana fukanga hapo wa malizangi. Umepua 24 hours, Jezebel ametumaka messenger. Shetani ametumaka messenger. But you see, that threat does not work if Elijah does not hear about it. Because a threat is nothing without the messenger. So there will always be somebody, kutakua tu nakamutu, who will make sure you hear what could have happened or what would happen or what might happen. So Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so the Lord, let the gods do to me and more also. Yo story yote in other words, kusema tu mimi nitapita na wewe vilulipita na watu wangu. Elijah wakatalisikia yo story. Kusi Elijah mungine. Nule ametoka kunyorosha prophets yo said ingine. Now by the way, by the time na malizapo, Elijah likimbia ataka shinda horse, chariot. Si Elijah mungine uyo, lakini hapa, kamama tuka shamtishia. The Bible records that he arose and started running for his life. And he came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servant there. Now, he is running for his life. And when he comes to Beersheba, he leaves his servant there because anxiety will always place you in isolation. In order for anxiety to be infective, it must have some privacy with you. In fact, hakuna mtu ashai kwa na shida mingi kama hizi. Kwani, kwani ulirogwa na mtu na kakufa? Hakuna mtu ashai kwa na shida mingi kama hizi. Anxiety nataka kukweka kwa your place. So Elijah, he has now put his servant out in Beersheba and he goes out a little further into the wilderness. And when he saw that, Alif Kamali, he came and sat under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. Ule mtu ametoka kunyorosha chapter 17, doyo hapa nazima, ayy. 
In fact, huyu Elijah kama alikuwa anakaa kwa mti, anasema nataka kudai. Siangejipeleka basi kwa Jezebel, acha punguze maisha. Because he was sure Jezebel was out to kill him. Yeah, ameenda na kaa kwa mti. Mimi mimi nataka tu kudai mimi. He stress sitaki. And so the problem that I have with Elijah is not for him wanting to die. Because Elijah alikuwa na pressure. I understand him. I feel him. He had gotten to the point where serious anxiety can take you. That where you feel life is meaningless. Or as some would say, life stinks. That there are people who used to come to church. But kwa sababu ya anxiety. That si juu nitalipa renta aje. Si juu pali nitatua fees. Si juu vile familia angu ita survive na economy. Ya isa lekari ya Kenya Kwanza. So, what I mean is you can get to home. Anxiety. Likes it when you're lonely. You may decide how could you church. You can get to home. Anxiety. It can be a leave you your home. That you've chosen not to come to church. You've chosen not to attend fellowship. You've chosen to go to church. You can say, I'm going home. You can go to church. My friend, anxiety. It can be a home. When anxiety checks in, brothers and sisters, the best place to be is here in church. The best place to be in the fellowships. Because there you're not lonely. There you'll have someone to pray with. As John said, Kwa HBC, ndio su pray pamoja. Kuna prayer request mingi atuwezi ziseme hapa, lakini tutadil nazo vilivyo kwa HBC. That ntasema ni kona anxiety fulani, my mother is not feeling well. Tutadil nayo, uko kwa HBC. So we don't just announce it because Tunakutafikia mpango ya wiki ya tihauna. It is meant for you. It will help you deal with the anxieties that come into your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Because we'll all have this kind of Elijah moments where you feel like life in a bow. Whether it will life in a bow. I can be smiling with you very well in church, but inside you're crumbling because of anxiety. But there's some truth. Tell me about the truth. The truth is, there is nothing wrong with your life, Elijah. The only thing that has happened in your life, Elijah, is you have been threatened by Jezebel. Life yako ko sawa. There's nothing wrong with your life. Are you going to throw everything about your life just because of anxiety? Church, are we going to throw away our salvation because of anxiety? Ya situation moja, ama nyingine. That you've walked with the Lord not for one year, not for two years, for a couple of years. Then one situation and you decide, wacha yi kuokoka ikai, I'm going back to the world. Situation moja itakurudisha nyuma. Are we going to say, I want to die? I want to go back to the world. But you see, what strikes me most <laughs> is when this verse says, he himself, he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. The word day is what strikes me because Jezebel on this side alisema by this time today. Alikuwa mempatia nini? 24 hours, ndio? Elijah ameenda a day's journey. Sindio? So which means Elijah has already done 24 hours. The clock had run out on the threat. And you're still running. Elijah is so depressed that he doesn't even notice that the Lord kept him through the whole duration of the threat. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. That he doesn't even stop and say thank you that the threat is over. Threat will require 24 hours. Sally, I'm my friend, 24 hours. 24 hours, Elisha, Elijah is still alive. He doesn't even notice. By the way, I'm still here. 
But I don't know who I came to preach to this very afternoon. And the word for you is the threat is over. And these are those moments where someone is saying amen, but someone is, has a different kind of threat. For you it may be shule. For another one it may be health. For another one it may be fees. For another one it may be rent. We've got different kinds of threat. The Lord is saying to you this day that the threat is over. 24 hours zilla likutishia, my friend, the Lord is saying the threat is over. Tell your neighbor the threat is over. Whatever that was set against you, the threat is over. The threat is over. And no, don't let the devil convince you just because of that temporary circumstance to forget who you are in the Lord. You might be in a storm right now. You might be suffering right now. You might be broke right now. But don't believe that circumstance. Don't make a permanent decision over that temporary circumstance because the threat is over. Hallelujah. In closing, our other text was from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Where it says, cast your anxiety, cast your cares, cast your burdens unto the Lord. For he cares for you. It's like Jesus is telling us that your shoulders are not big enough to carry your burdens. Wacha kujipatia pressure kubeba. Transfer your pressure kwangu. Ukingangane umzigo itakumaliza. Transfer your pressure kwangu. Transfer your anxiety kwangu. Throw it on me. Let me carry it for you. Which problems are we supposed to transfer to the Lord? The word says all. Regardless of paliyo shide litokea. Regardless of your cause, your anxiety. All. Because Jesus cares. He gives it serious attention. However big it is. However small it is, it may look stupid even to everyone else. But yo, yo, Jesus is saying, that one, I care for you. It's part of the things I died for. That problem that seems so insignificant. That we have 10 bob and we have 10 million. That problem, that one, throw it to me. Throw it to me. That's my job to bear it for you. Akusema chagua zingine zingine we will handle. He's saying, cast it all to me. Cast it all to me. When you transfer it to the Lord, see at your problem haitakuwa jina iko. Lakini, shetani ya kikuja kwambi, unajua kulikuwa naka kaugonjo na mwambia haha. Ni sawa, lakini ya ndulize mungu juu, haiko saidi yangu. Deal your side. Please, deal. Deal your side. You know you have a city. Ah! Deal your side. I've already cast it out to the Lord. For he cares for me. And he's interested in everything. Everything. Health. Academic. Rent. Business, job, bosses, whatever it is, the Lord is interested in every little detail of your life. Yote, yote. Usiseme tu hii watoto wangu ni tower manage ni generation ya teenagers. No, the Lord is interested in them. He is interested in your business. He is interested in your workplace. He's interested in this nation. He is interested and he's saying, you guys, just do it. Just cast it out to me. In fact, when you read the text, cast from the Greek text, see ati kuchukua kueka pole pole, like, ni kurusha, chukua izi vitu. Sitaki izi vitu, sajangu, chukua izi vitu. Bear them for me. Throw that weight to Jesus because he cares for you. Because when you do it, then you'll be able to enjoy the peace of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And you may be in this house 
that you've never had an opportunity to even to give your life to Jesus. That mzigo ndio umezibeba. That unakuja nga church, unazia chapo nje, unaingia church kisha unatoka unarudi nazo. Today may be an opportunity of casting all these cares onto the Lord. Ukuja nuziache hapa hapa that you leave this church a free man, a free woman. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to stand and pray. I want us to stand and pray. I'll have somebody on the keyboard. I believe the word has come forth in simplicity. I believe that's what the Lord wanted us to hear this day. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you are here in this house, under the sound of my voice, and you've never given your life to Jesus. You're struggling with anxiety. You don't know what will happen. You don't know about the future. I have news for you. Jesus holds your future. He holds your future. He upholds this universe. And he cares for you. So much that he died for you. So much that he gave his life so that you may live. So if you are here and you've never given your life to Jesus, I'll ask you to kindly raise up your hand and I'll pray with you. Anxiety works in isolation. Raise up your hand and I'll pray with you that today can be a beginning of a new season in your life. Today can be a beginning of a new season in your life. Or you may be here and you were born again, yes, but because of the cares of this world, because of the pressure, because of the stress, because of the anxiety, you went back to the world. The Lord is calling you back home. The Lord is calling you back home. I'm calling people back home. Anybody in the house, would you raise up your hand from wherever we, you are? I'll be praying with you from wherever you are. Oshantabakaya, I see a hand. Oshakara bababaya. Anyone else in the house? Anyone else in the house? The Lord is in the business of restoring. The Lord is in the business of restoring. Anyone in the house? Rabamanda sheke taya yabosaya. Mama rakaram no bosh na brakran tamana namuna nasaya. The Lord is about to do something awesome in this house. No rabababakaya. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else who want to give his life to Christ? Shara rabobo bashan terere shakan tezeze setana namona mahaya. Narabo shente ne la 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 antokon tarababa banere la 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 rabobo saya. The Lord Almighty is doing a work in the house. He is doing a work in the house. He is doing a work in the house. Ora ba 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 ya shentelerando ro kosherelenda ba 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 shanta haya. Mamba shetere ketenda ba zeta yanda namakaya. Anyone else who's joining this sister? Anyone else? I don't want to lock you out. The Lord has a plan and a purpose for you. The Lord has a plan and a purpose for you. The Lord has a plan and a purpose for you. Anyone